Now, Lord, let your words in my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength, my redeemer, is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, These things saith the Son of God, who has his eyes like unto a flame unto fire, and his feet are like brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Now this is the third letter that John is writing to the churches in what we identify as Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey. There are seven churches that he was writing to. The first was a church at Ephesus. And we remember as we studied that, we found that Ephesus was a, a thriving city. And I shared with you that a few years ago, uh, my wife and I were in Ephesus along with uh, uh, several other members uh, uh, of this church. Brother Thay and his wife, there were others that were with us when we went to Ephesus and to Sardis, which is modern Izmir. And Ephesus was a thriving community. And we recognized that According to John, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, he said, you are a thriving church, you're doing the work, you're doing good works, but you've lost your first love. And your first love was that of Christ. And then to the church of Sardis, the second church that he wrote to, he said, now Sardis, I know the work you have been doing, but you are under great pressure. You are poor, but yet you are very rich. And he was referring to the fact that Sardis was a prosperous city, but it had a community of people that were against the church. Uh, first was the, the uh, Jewish uh, community, which had grown somewhat prosperous in that area and they had committed themselves to the Roman government and they displayed their loyalty at least once a year. They would come and bow to Caesar, kiss the ring, and say there is one Lord, Caesar. Yeah. And they also supported the festivals and other actions that were promoted by the Roman government. And, and so John wrote to that church and said, I know what you're doing. Not only are you suffering from uh, within, but you're suffering from without. Within there were those that were rising up that were causing chaos in the church by um, emphasizing that uh, they should uh, uh, give in to the world and and there was even those that had rose up that were uh, de demanding that they sacrifice to idols. And, and when the people would rebel against this, then the government and the Jewish community was hurting them. And it hurt the congregation because many of them were devout. They weren't very rich. They had jobs and they had uh, other things of of, of importance to them, but without economic support. They were losing everything. And so John said, I know you're poor, but you're rich. And I know there's some that are becoming martyrs, but I want you to know you have the greater crown. That was to the church at Sardis. Today we're talking to the church at Thyatira. And that church, Thyatira, was the third church John was writing to. And Thyatira was a small city between Pergamos and, uh, and <clears throat> the, uh, between Pergamos and uh, 
Ephesus. And so when he, when he wrote to that church, he was saying to them, listen, uh, you are in great contrast. You have uh, a, a, a strategic place between uh, Pergamos and, and Sardis. And, and Thyatira was renowned for its uh, two major industries. Uh, dye and wool. And because it had this successful uh, industry of dye and wools, uh, they had a strong trade union. See, trade unions are not new. They were very, very successful in biblical times. And in, in Pergamon and, and Thyrea in particular, it was thriving. Because of that, Thyatira was a very active city and the church was involved in all kinds of works for the Lord. In that church, they showed care and provided for the things the people needed. So here we find the church doing the work of the church. Those three churches we've talked about, the church were very, very busy. It was a growing church, a church that showed love, a church that provided food, clothing, and shelter to those that needed it. And with all of that positiveness, there was something about that church that really, really provoked the spirit of the Lord. For in that church, there was a Jezebel spirit. And, and that Jezebel spirit was led by a person that was identified as Jezebel. Uh -huh. and, and, and so the church allowed her to be influential in the congregation. She became a teacher. And, and this is what provoked the spirit of the Lord. Because they allowed her to, to rise to an elevated position in the church, uh, the church began to compromise. The church at Pergamon compromised. And now we find the church of Thyatira uh, compromising. So all of this stuff is, is growing. Now why am I emphasizing all of this? I'm emphasizing all of this because we are living in the time of prophetic utterance. And the book of Revelation was revealing church history and church prophecy. And these seven churches that are being written to, he was addressing the problems that were current in those congregations. And those same problems have followed the bloodline of the church to today. And now we're, we're going to learn in our study of Revelation how the uh, different symbols have meaning in today's environment. The woman, Jezebel, was able to seduce the congregation, and her doctrines were opposite those of Christ. Her teachings were false, and the church was allowing her to spread her false teachings. Her teaching seduced the people into committing all types of immoral behavior. She thought, she taught that believers needed to be participating in some of the world's the functions in order to be friendly and keep their jobs. And she taught that if a person <clears throat> said that they worship God, and did not know Christ, that it was acceptable behavior. Oh, yeah. She taught that Jesus is not the only way to God, that he is not the only savior. She taught that believers could not separate themselves from the world. Now this is the kind of doctrine this woman identified as Jezebel, was teaching. Yeah. 
And the spirit of Christ was provoked because she was deceiving the church. She was seducing the church with these doctrines. And many folk were finding themselves following the teachings of Jezebel while they felt themselves to be good members in the church. Now the reason I'm putting a pin in that is because it sort of makes things uh, clearer today. Thyatira had a strong business community and the unions and guilds had great influence even the social, over the social and economic behavior. And because of the teachings of Jezebel, the people felt free to engage in all the worldly behavior. Drunkenness, fornication, gambling, adultery, etc. The members of the church were easily seduced because it appealed to their human nature. Why am I emphasizing this? Why am I putting a pen in this? I'm putting a pen in it because it is reflecting what is going on in our churches today. Yeah. There's a seductive, yeah. compromising spirit in the church today. That's right. The mantra is come as you are and do what you want to do. Uh. As long as you leave some money, yeah. come and do what you want to do. You, you come to church and the preacher is not going to make you upset because he's not going to preach the adulterate, unadulterated gospel. He's going to preach uh, what you want to hear. So you're comfortable in your ungodly behavior. The word of God is like a two-edged sword. It's going to cut you. That's right. You can't remain the same when the word of God reaches you where you are. I'm reminded of this young man. He was newly appointed to this church. And every Sunday he preached this. He preached. He preached. And every Sunday there was some agitation in the congregation. The members were upset at the preacher. And he couldn't understand because he was preaching every Sunday. He was preaching the word of God. So he had the meeting and he said to the congregation, listen, every Sunday when I preach, I make some of you upset. What is it? What is it? What is it? So this good sister said to him, well, Reverend, uh, the reason you're, uh, the people are upset is because of what you're preaching. And what you're preaching is touching them where they are. You're preaching about sin, yeah. and they don't like it. And she said, now, preacher, if you want to get along in this church, why don't you preach about cannibalism? We don't have none of them here. <laughs> well, that's how it is in, in today's world. A preacher in the pulpit is preaching everything to make it easy listening for the hearer. Because the word of God, when it's preached, unadulterated, is going to touch you where you are. And once you hear the word of God, you know the word of God as truth and you become accountable. Yeah. You, you don't have to uh, think about it. Uh, 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 you know what's wrong. And oftentimes I've heard people say, well, I know it's wrong, but. And my observation is if you know it's wrong, why are you doing it? Yeah. Well, you're doing it because that's what you want to do. Yeah. If that's what you want to do, hey, be prepared for the consequences. That's right. Uh, you can make your choice. That's how God made us, mm -hmm. creatures of choice. Well, that church of Thyatira was a church that allowed this Jezebel spirit to, to take over. And it wasn't hard because it was a commercial in, uh, environment. And there were a lot of social gatherings. There were a lot of of idol worship. There was a lot of partying, getting drunk, fornicating, adultery, gambling, and all the stuff that people uh, like to do in lascivious living. So the people who loved the church at Thyatira, it was growing. But God was not pleased.
because it was growing with a sense of a with a false doctrine, a false teaching. Yeah. In other words, uh, you can do what you want to do. God, and we hear this all the time. Well, God knows my heart, yeah. but God also see your deeds. Yeah. And, and, and so we've got to make people recognize that this is a serious journey, that the word of God is for, for us to have a better journey on this side of glory. Amen. Somebody said, uh, believers, instruction, and in living before eternity. So we want to get instructions in living before eternity. We need to understand that. And the word of God needs to be taught uncompromising. And, and we know something. When the word of God is taught and preached uncomprom uncompromising, it's going to cause a whole lot of, of people to get upset and angry because it's not what they want to hear. But we must, we must, we must, See, I didn't emphasize this, but each of those seven churches, the message is addressed to the angel of that church. Angel, by definition, is messenger. And when we reduce it, it's the leader of that congregation. The leader is responsible for that congregation. Yeah. The leader has the responsibility to teach the word and preach the word and live the word to the best of their understanding. That's right. The word validates us. We don't have to add or subtract anything to it. The word validates us. So the church at Thyatira, the church at Sardis, the third church, Pergamon, those three churches were being reminded by the Spirit of Christ through the pastor through the leader, that you are held accountable. Amen. Many churches today compromise the integrity of the word of God and has allowed all kinds of seductive Jezebel spirits to take hold in the church. How else can we explain the worldly behavior of the church when it allows anything to take place in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I cringe sometimes when I hear people identifying themselves as Christians. And, and, and it's, they're, they're very worldly in their behavior, and yet they want to act like Christians or call themselves Christians. If you are a child of God, if you are a Christian, there's a certain behavior that you display. Yeah. And it's not a behavior walking around with sackcloth and ashes and, and so pious. But a Christian spirit is a spirit of love. It's a spirit of con concern. Yeah. It's a spirit of commitment. It's a spirit of obeying the word of God to the best of your ability. That's, right. That's the, a Christian demeanor. You don't need to... to to, to do it to your own understanding. That's why the word of God teaches in all your ways, acknowledge him yeah. and he will direct your path. That's the word right. of God is a light unto our pathway, a guide unto our feet. The word of God yes, is what will keep us. That's right. The word of God will direct us. We must understand what God has promised us through Christ. Oft time we overlook it, but he said, it's my desire that you prosper and be in good health. Yeah. Now those two are joined together. God wants us to be prosperous. He don't want us to always talk about, I got the needs and I got, the, I got a, the habits and all of that other stuff. He said we are to be prosperous. How can you be a blessing to somebody else if you can't help yourself? The word of God said it's my desire that you prosper and be in good health. And the word of God teaches us how to be prosperous and how to have good health. That's what God wants for us through Jesus. Yeah. And unfortunately, we don't want it for ourselves. Uh -uh. 
Christ is taking a serious look at the church and is going to judge the church that compromise, that compromise with the world and corrupt the church. Oh yes, we see churches everywhere and, and, and people everywhere calling this a church and their behavior. The only reason you know it's a church because every now and then they say the name Christ. But the demeanor and the behavior and the dress code and all of that worldly stuff is right there. Sometimes people are leaving the club and staggering on into the church and, 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 and feeling good while they're there. Yeah. Well, let me say this to anybody. If the Spirit of God touches you in the nightclub and you come to the church, uh, here at St. Luke, we will welcome you. Because we know the next time you come, you won't be drunk. The next time you come, you won't be coming from the nightclub. The next time you come, you'll come with, a, with a, an enthusiasm to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. And all of those things, the drinking and the drugs and all that other crazy stuff that you used to do, you won't do it anymore because the power of the word of God will touch you where you are yeah. and change your change. demeanor. Oh, yeah. The word of God, Jesus said to that church that I am watching you. He's saying to you, I am watching you. He's saying to you that if you don't repent, you are going to be held accountable and some bad things are coming your way. Let's understand something about the book of Revelations. Oftentimes people uh, hear all of the uh, signs and all of the ghoulishness of the church, but that's just uh, 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 metaphorical language. Uh, it's not a book of dragons and demons and all of those kinds of things. The bloodline of Revelation is a word of encouragement. We must understand the bloodline of Revelation is a word of encouragement. He's saying, he that has an ear, let him hear. And we know that faith cometh by what? Hearing. Hearing the word of God. Yeah. So the bloodline in Revelation is to the churches. And it's talking about the church in the days of the early church and the bloodline running to right now. And I would declare unto you according to the biblical clock, we are at the 11th hour, the 59th minute, and the 32nd. Woo. Short time. And we need to get right with God. Yeah. Because his judgment is coming. And the encouragement that Revelation is saying to us, repent. Repent. Turn your back on those ways of the world. Turn your back and recognize and receive the blessings that are in store for you. God wants us to be a, 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 a light on a hill. Want us to be the example where people that are perishing can look and see light from us and commit themselves to that light. That's why the words say, let your light so shine that men, women, boys and girls may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Now to the church at Theratyra, he said, I, I, I know your works and, and I see what you're doing. And I'm asking you not to compromise the integrity of the word, but hold fast and, and, and hold on. Now, sometimes in the process, you're going to come against difficult odds. For after all, they're threatening you with your, with your livelihood. They'll fire you from your job, et cetera, et cetera. But someone said, for Christ, I'll, I'll live. I'll stand. Yeah. All other ground is sinking sand. I'll stand on the word of God. Yeah. For the word says, great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So Christ is saying to those leaders, 
you will be judged. And you will be judged because he is the one that searches the minds and hearts and thoughts of the people. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 reminds us, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. That's why uh, John wrote to the church at Thyatira, He's saying that I want you to know that you have an opportunity to repent and if you repent, you will receive the glorious crown of life. Amen. He wants you to know that if you repent, you will receive the things that will make your life much better if you repent. So the lesson to the church of Thyatira is stop compromising. The church at Pergamon, stop compromising and repent. The church at Sardis, stop compromising and repent because it's so important that we recognize that we are coming down the, the home stretch and these lessons that are being taught are for our for our good and to prepare us because we are running down the home stretch now where God is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. And the church is not the building, the sanctuary, the temple, the synagogue. The church is the redeemed body of baptized believers. Yeah. Wherever you are yeah. and you are a child of God, you're yeah. part of the body of Christ. That's right. And he's coming back looking for that. Yes, right. And so he emphasized, yes. I will give him the morning star. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit okay. saith unto the church. Yes. Amen. Amen. And amen. Yes. Let us all stand. The doors of the church are open.